All right, good afternoon to everyone. Let's just stand as we pray. Let's pray, dear Father, we are grateful for life, health, and strength. We are thank you. We are thankful, dear Father, for your goodness and your mercy towards us. Even now, as we set out to convene this meeting, we are thankful that you have granted us the showers of rain early on, and now we are here with cool weather, dear Father, to be able to discuss matters pertaining to the Hospat area. I ask that your spirit will condescend even to this special place as we speak and discuss and that everything will be done to your names, honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone, residents of the Hot Pratt area. Good afternoon. Good to see you guys here. Um, this afternoon, we are here to tell you a little bit about a project that will commence soon in your district and in your area. So I will invite now the Minister Responsible for Communications and Work, the Honorable Kai Raima, to bring some remarks and tell you a little bit about why we are here today. Mr. Percival, who is mostly affected in terms of his property, but for all the motorists, we also have an issue with the way this dip is designed and uh, traversing it, especially when we have vehicles in the area and so forth. So, noting this issue, we have engaged public work. Public works went, went out, they did a design for this area, and today we are here to present what we are intending to correct for this dip. Um, this has been a long-standing issue. We know we have done some repairs previously, some repairs in the area. We also did some work up above. But like I say, only Mr. Percival, he feels the brunt of it when, um, when he starts to get flooded out um, in his yard and for the, all the other residents in the area. And any other issue that we may seem deemed to address today. But public work is here, and I appreciate the director and his team for actually taking the time out um, to do the designs. We've actually engaged someone to do the works, and we intend to resume the work shortly to get this dip finally addressed. This has been something long in common. We've worked on this for, uh, since I've been elected, I've, um, I know especially in the past year or so, we've been working hard to get this addressed, and we're here today, and I feel proud to know that. We're addressing this issue in our community. So as we work to get the the TV started out where we, you'll be able to come and view the actual designs and so forth. I'm not sure if you want to come closer, those who may need, who don't have any glasses or anything, may come a little closer so that we can look and see what was done. And I'm sure that there will be some questions pertaining to how this would function and how this would be a safer traverse for the motorists and also for the residents in the area. So I say good afternoon again. I see my wife coming, so I just want to acknowledge her and tell her good afternoon, even though she's um, a ways off, but I welcome her to the community meeting. And I now turn it over to Public Works, where they would discuss the plans uh, for this area. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, my name is Kurt Hodge. I'm the Deputy Director at Public Works Department of Engineering. Um, this is one of the few projects that, um, that I will personally design. Uh, uh, for those of you in the area know of the situation in terms of how the water flow comes down on, within the dip, and the dip was placed there basically in a way to stop the water from flooding Mr. Percival. But the way in which they constructed it um, created a greater prob um, problem for the traversing public. And one of the ways you're looking at it, you know, at the dip, I'm sorry we can't see it from here. Oh, we can. Can you go, keep going. Go. All right, go one more, go to one more page. Okay, great, stop right there. 
Um, one of the things that we, were, we encountered when we were looking at the dip is that most people think is the dip is the problem, but the dip isn't really the problem. Whoever constructed the original pavement is that they did the cross section of the, the, the way the road is tilted or camber, or camber to the side to the drain is at a 13.5%. And a norm, you don't want to go over 5.5%. I'm not going to get too much into the weeds, but the whole situation is, is like you, if you're pushing a wheelchair and you're going up a ramp and the ramp is tilted, so you have this type of feeling like you're about to tilt over. So you're getting that same feeling when you're driving on top of the dip itself because the road is tilted so far to the, to the left that you get this feeling when you're going over the dip that you want to, that your vehicle is going to actually tilt over. So one of the ways we're going to correct that is we're going to actually take the, 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 the dip itself, the road itself, the surface itself, and we're going to camber it back up. We're going to still leave our, our tilt back over to the side of the drain. However, it's not going to be as severe or as great as it is right now. So what that's going to do is, especially for emergency vehicles like, a, like the ambulance or someone in a high vehicle like a truck who has problems traversing the area because their vehicles are much um, higher in, in, in height, and they, they feel that difference in, um, difference in surface area, they will now have a better, um, they will have it easier traversing through the area. So what we're going to actually do, if you look, if you're able to look at the drawing, you will see that there's some arrows showing the flow of water and how the water is coming down. We're going to keep that flow of water that comes down from the top. It's not going to change. We're going to keep it until it passes Mr. Percival, Mr. Percival's entrance. And for those of you not aware of what that entrance is, is the entrance that says entrance number one. So that area that says entrance number one, that's Mr. Percival's entrance. So if you look past this little um, thing there, you see Mr. Percival's house. That's that on the map right there. Once we get past Mr. Percival's um, entrance, we then traverse back over to the other side of the road. But we're not going to traverse back over with a great um, camber. We're going to reduce the camber, and the camber is going to go over at 5.5%. And that's going to go over to the existing drain. And for those of you who live in the area, you'll know that the existing drain right now is pretty much in a, um, a sad state. It's pretty much non-existent. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to demolish the drain that's there, box drain that's there, and we're going to rebuild it. So what we're going to do is rebuild it in a way that it has entrances into the drain itself. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow the water to go drop into the drain, and it's going to also make it a lot easier for us to maintain it as well, public, um, for public works to maintain it as well. We're then gonna, the water is then going to flow through the, um, past the drain itself and then go down where it originally was going, and then this drain follows the existing drain that's there, and that drain ends up down at Huntum's Gut. For those that know of the drain, that's the drain that's behind Chicken's Bar, those are, who are aware of that area. So that's one of them I think they did back um, way back where with CDB where they upgraded the drain. So this drain is going to connect. That water flow is going to connect to that existing drain that was updated, upgraded about, I think, about seven or eight years ago. So, well, so basically, for those that are wondering about the pavement as well, the pavement is also going to be reinforced. I mean, know a lot of different heavy equipments travel within this area and it's very difficult for them to take the flatbed up and some of them end up um, taking the machine on the road to get up to the um, existing property just because the roadway is not really accessible for the flatbeds to be able to go fully up because of certain corners. So what we did with this project is we took into the consideration that situation and we reinforced the concrete with reinforcements, so, which would pretty much increase its lifespan. Um, I think I covered everything, but what I'll do now is I'll open up the floor for anyone that would have questions on the, the, the project itself or any concerns that they would have on a project. If anyone have any con um, concerns on the project or any questions or anything that need to be clarified, please feel free to ask. Um, right now, it's going to be finished with concrete, but asphalt is something that we could do at a later date, which is not the, the way it's going to be done. Asphalt can come on it at a later date. Um, the only place that we're not going to be able to asphalt is the area in which we're going to be traversing back over to the other side in terms of the concrete going back over to the other side. So that's something that public work can do. So if the community wish to see asphalt on it, we can, we can place asphalt on there.
um roughly it's roughly if you look in a little bit past um Petri or Mr. Um, Steady's retaining wall, I'm about 25 to 30 feet past the retaining wall when you're looking at here. So where we are right now, we're sitting right here by the propane storage tank area. So once we get past this propane storage tank area, we're going up about 30 to 40 feet upwards. The road. The concrete itself. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so if we right here and we're looking at here, this is us here sitting down here by the propane. This is the propane tank right there. <laughs> this is us here sitting down, and basically the road goes extend upwards, about 40 feet upwards up the hill. My concern, may I ask a question? Yes. We have a number of water trucks and heavy equipment that comes through here. Yeah. And to consider when a water truck comes with load. Uh -huh. Most times this a don't come on me, please. <laughs> <laughs> you look so lovely. No, I don't. My hair, my hair got wet. <laughs> so I look like a wet fall. <laughs> um, to consider that when the trucks are going with loads, yeah. Um, particularly because we face two different runoffs from guts, the water is the road sometimes is slippery. Yeah. So concrete is uh, even more dangerous things for those trucks yeah. to come up the hill. So asphalt is definitely going to be needed. Okay, that's something we can definitely do. So what we could do with the contractor is um, in a spot where we're going to actually, which was a, wouldn't be a variation in cost, the spot where we know the water we're making that traverse over, we would leave that one spot in concrete, and then we'll make adjustments to allow for asphalt for the remainder of the road. Wait. Which would not be, which wouldn't affect us completing the project? No, well, to make it more comfortable for you, um, concrete, of course, always going to be more or less irrigated. It will be, like I said, rough enough that a slip ridge wouldn't happen. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, the duration, what happens with moss and those other things, that's what makes it slippery. And the duration that occurs that we will not have that happening so soon. So it give us, the government, will have enough time to at least look at it further on, down the line, for the asphalt to come on. Mm. Um, the timeline, if I remember correctly, is um, a little over a month, month and a half. The start date is going to be, it's not confirmed yet, but if we're looking at it, we're looking at we want to confirm with the contractor. We haven't re we we got it the the contracts and so forth, but we want to sit down and plan out with the contractor. But once we were able within this week to plan out with the contractor, once we get a firm date, it should take us a month and a half to complete. Month and a half, two months the most, but month and a half based on our timeline. Good. My question is regarding yeah. the logistics of the work. Um, are they going to be doing it? side by side or one side this could, or, or time of the day firstly uh -huh. and logistics as to how as you know it is it is the roads are very narrow yes it is one road going on the back there where uh -huh. you could hardly get down uh -huh. and this one one yes. one evening there was an accident here uh -huh. and it took me two hours to come up the back you so walk i know you don't it walk took me two time. hours i walk <laughs> a lot but it took me two hours to, to come yeah. drive up the back yeah. Where ISIS and all uh, coming uh, up uh -huh. to there. Yeah. So, how is it by box and all that? So, how uh -huh. the logistics going to work? You're going to have police, you're going to have walkie talkie, they're going to tell one another when to come well, and when we, to go. You, you're going to pack your vehicle up there and help people up and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just mess with you. No, well, the way we're going to do it is we're going to do half of the road. So, um, especially in this area here. So, what we plan to do with a contractor, which again, we're going to meet with him this week um, and sort out the logistics, but the one of the things that we were looking at getting a contractor to, to agree to, if possible, because he has his own, um, his own methodology on how we will go first, but we'll come to some kind of medium. But one of the medium that we're looking at is doing half of the road. So we will look at doing the, the, we'll look at doing the drainage first, doing this one half of the road first, being that it, it's um, reinforcement. We don't have a problem doing that because we will just let the steel stick out. Of course, not too far to damage any vehicle but it will still be enough for you to be able to traverse up and down or any trucks and stuff want to traverse within the area. And then once we're finished with this side of the road, which has the most work to be completed, then we'll go to the next side. And then that's something that we can then discuss with a contractor, whether we can cast it at night or on a Saturday or 
but that's something that we'll discuss with the contractor when is the best time to, where uh, we know there's not a significant amount of traffic during the, that period of time when we can cast it. Yeah, well, well, from my point of view, I will look at it, right? If the vehicle is coming from up the hill, let her use that road to go that way. And these who live from this side use here to go down here. So you got some time, like you say, maybe a month and a half to walk right there, but you're going to need a communication between somebody on top of the hill here and somebody down at the bottom of the hill because the traffic, you know, got to use to come up to come back home. So you can make it a one way. So yeah. they're going to need some sort out. Whatever the case may be, and, and, and I think that you could go ahead and walk in the road right, right here if so long we get that kind of communication. Yeah. You, you can ask for nothing better than that. Uh -huh. Yes, and there's, there's a number, the contractor is here, he has, a number, um, he has a number of traffic control measures within his contract, so he's definitely going to um, be able to control that stuff. And as for Mr. Gaskin in terms of um, talking to the public, I'll let the minister talk a little bit more about that, but... They, we have a whole um, section down in the communication and works that deals with getting to the public and liaising with the public and letting them know um, what is taking place within the district. But I'll let him, I wouldn't step on his toes, I'll let him talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, but I also got to consider in mind too that mm -hmm. um, that road over there is a kind of narrow road, it can't take like two vehicles. Yes. So you, somebody got to monitor when, when you could come up and when you could go down. So that's... That's why that's why there's a traffic control measure. So you would have yes. to have one person on one on end and end one end person on the next end, end to, to control it. That flow of traffic yeah. that going that way, they could get it managed. But here, yes. I think we could control over here on this side. Yeah. Yes. I, I we all understand that it's gonna be tough. But the, the man them doing a project, they gotta get the project done. You either go that way, or we don't get a project done. <laughs> By ISIS. By ISIS Malone. Yeah. No, Kurt, Kurt, you can. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Um, long ago, the there were some portable traffic lights. I mean, we now have traffic lights, and people obey them. Do we have any portable traffic lights that, you know, you you do? A, yeah, I, I don't know where they, there was like 32 years ago on Ridge Road. <laughs> I mean, hey, sorry, I, I've been here for a while, and I remember riding a bike, and I obeyed the light, and I was waiting for it, waiting for it, waiting for it. Then I w went, and somebody was coming against the, the red light, but now we have traffic lights. So I'm kind of serious about that question is that I, I, for one, live up above, so whatever you decide... I mean, I live higher than where your, you know your place is, yeah. right? So the, um, I have options, but I ideally would like to come down horse path, and you know, I would, oh, you know, I for one would obey a, uh, a traffic light. I think once people realize that it's a certain amount of time and it is going to go green, and then they're not going to meet anything that one way down that comes out, you know, bus out. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't want to call names, but basically where, where it comes out, then um, we could follow up with that. But I, I don't know if the BVI has that. Um, I, we had traffic lights before, but if I remember correctly, Orma went with the ones that we had, and I don't think we ever replaced them. But that's something that we can look at in the future. Okay. But what we'll, we'll focus a lot on is a lot of traffic control me uh, measures in terms of demarcation. And making sure that the project is well demarcated, that no one um, gets injured, as well as controlling how the traffic traffic flows, especially when we're doing construction in terms of how they pass up and down. What we're going to aim for, especially with the contractor, is we're going to aim a lot to do in, in with efficiency um, in terms of completing the project as quickly as possible. And the way we'll do that is making sure that we have everything lined up in terms of the survey information. Um, what elevations they need to accomplish and so forth. So, in a, in, for instance, what we'll do is maybe we'll talk with him, see if we can start the drain first, which wouldn't affect the traffic uh, as quickly as possible, and then we deal with uh, placing on the material and then placing the one half of the road, so and tiny steel and placing on one half of the road. But I'm pretty sure, look, I, I know the contractor is he's very aggressive and. <laughs> And, 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 like, and like Kurt said, like um, Kurt said, the, there's there's um aspect in your contract for the traffic control okay. measures. Mm -hmm. So in the absence of the traffic lights, he should be hiring persons to make sure that he direct 
the traffic and so forth. Mm -hmm. But the alternate road, that road is asphalted. So it's a road that I use all the time. And I'm sure if, you know, you'll be comfortable using it. It's just, I guess maybe when you get to the, the corner is a little, mm -hmm. a little treacherous, but I'm sure it's, it would work. But the reason, I mean, you, you asked about how would there be, how would residents know? I think that's why we're here this afternoon, so that the residents wouldn't be surprised that we're actually doing the road works here. And they would actually be a part of the conversation and uh, ask any questions. And you know, it wouldn't be a surprise to anybody that these works are actually being done. So that's why we asked for, for you to come out to this meeting this afternoon to discuss um, these issues. Mother's Day and Father's Day and all them kind of day to make sure that we are apprised of what's happening up here because I am telling you, I not everybody is aware. I just call a couple of my neighbors to bring them here. So I got a WhatsApp message from you and I make sure I hear. But here I drive up this road constantly and this road is a problem. Thank you, Mr. Gaskin. That's why we're here. Well, let me, let me, yes, I live to the top of the road. So one of the words I'm, one of the words I'm going to use is, um, is efficiency, like the gentleman used earlier on, right? Efficiency and comfort is one of the main things that we're looking at um, on this project, especially in this community that have a lot of vehicles traversing it, right? Um, one of the things that you're talking about using the roads and the stoplights and so forth, one of the things we can do, we can create a loop more or less. You know, everybody on this side is regularly two-way. Everybody's coming from up. If anything, you can use that one as a one-way for a certain um, extent. And a portion of this, you can allow them to go down. So you can use this as a two-way. But if, like, in, for instance, if it gets too heavy, you don't want to be as a clutter, especially on a one-way road. So we'll keep it as a one-way and, and for the first aspect of it. And, of course, as the gentleman... Uh, Early on, we were going to do it in phases, so we'll have a portion of this project being open for the most part until curing time occurs. But we will keep you abreast of what's happening. Of course, Mr. Gaskin said whether whichever medium it's more efficient and effective is the medium we're going to use. Obviously, um, he's saying the WhatsApp, <laughs> the WhatsApp package is the best one. We don't know, but we can. Okay, there you go. So we have the radio person in the house. You see. We have it on, it's on ZB, you didn't have it on ZB, if you're you the what? But it is on ZBVI. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. So, I don't know if you have any other suggestions of any other media to give the rest of the body, but um, radio, WhatsApp, I don't know, any other media that you can suggest that we can probably follow through on it as we unite to make this project smooth and and efficient. Oh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Paul Bridgewater. I'm the information officer for the Ministry of Communications and Works. In terms of sharing in, in all of these different mediums, I'm going to use as much as I can. So when the minister says that we're going to have some road walks, I'm going to start with Facebook, and we're going to go WhatsApp, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all of that. We're going to use it, and we're going to make sure that everybody in the community is abreast of what's going on. So. Like you said, Mr. Harry, WhatsApp, I'm going to make sure I send you the flyer so you can put it in WhatsApp and everybody going to have their version of it. So whichever version you like, radio, WhatsApp, whatever the case is, we're going to make sure we find you through that medium. If you want. If you want to. I have a Spanish co-worker and she could definitely translate that. Anyone have any other questions or concerns? I think if anybody wants to see actually what the works would be on the ground, maybe you could just take a look by the dip if there are any more, if there are no more questions up here. No, as I said, we're going to discuss it more. All those things that the gentleman consideration, I know you need to take time. Of course, school opening in September. Um, you have to iron out the home who auntie, uncle can pick up until you get that started. Or probably a week or two. I don't know, in terms of what we look at, um, all of us are parents and we have a general idea of how this goes. So what we look, look at a start date that suits, best suits the department, of course, the community members at hand first. Okay, so. 
Yeah, well, we got to keep an eye on that too because, you know, we got a major, as you notice, we have a major drain coming, dumping right onto the head of the project immediately. So we also, yeah, we're considering all aspects of it in our discussion, so we'll be clear. Where this road goes out to the Treasury Road, if you get a fence move, because we have another access out through here, if you could come down by the stoplight over here and on the other side. Now that the, the ownership of the land changed, we might be able to get through there now. The, the, the treasure anything on your owner? In pen? Yeah. Uh, just a fence. The two roads come and meet it right there. And once the fence moves, you have another access out through here. You could go straight out, come across there, and come down by the stoplight. I think they were going to do that way back when they put the road through here. The road is there. It's just a fence. <laughs> The two roads come meet the fence. It's just a fence to come down. The two public roads come to the fence. That fence has always been there. Who put it up? Huh? Who put up the fence? I don't know. I met it there. I barn met it there. <laughs> now that a whole bunch of houses are building out there, they, it might be easy to move now. No, no, it is, but normal will, will never open. Yeah. But, there's, but, but, but there's another one that goes through. Which road block off? On a hill. The one, what, the one where you could leave from Harspat and go to Fire Hill. Chris. <laughs> Chris, you could answer that. <laughs> it was a public road. No, no, it's not a public road. Well, as far as I know, because I actually had to sign a contract that uh, when I bought the land, that I would always leave it accessible to the Scatliff family, and that would be the immediate Scatliff family. So Ulrich, I mean, Kurt has experience with it because yeah. he had, he was very proper. He asked. Yeah, okay, okay, great, right, well, but talk to Ulrich then. Uh, Ulrich has a key, but yeah, and um, yeah, but, but uh, what I what I was told is that we would, and actually you can't um, not to this shouldn't be you know this could be very political and and Mr. Reimer you, Honorable Minister you you know this, um, I am <laughs> grateful for yes, my so, piece so, of property so, so but basically the you can go the Scatliff family can go into their land which they would go through but they're technically. It's not a through road, okay? And I had this, you know, like when I signed and bought the land, that was what was originally um, on the document. And I also know that the, my neighbor, Lynn, Lynn Sorrentino now, she is, is equally um, has that, that issue of like what she had to sign. And then as far as the Scatliff family is, concerned I would uh, just put it out there publicly that you can talk to Ulrich and he would then be able to explain some of the things. So yeah we'll have another meeting. Yeah that, that would be a whole nother meeting yes. so I didn't me mean to go on and on about that. You can delete that uh, the information. <laughs> Thank you. We, we, we said that Mr. Charles would do the benediction so. That's you? Charles. Behind you. Young Mr. Charles. Close us and send us home with God's blessings. <laughs> let, let us pray. Let's start our prayer, please. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this discussion that we had this afternoon. We pray that everything will go well. Everything will be organized. We pray that you will give strength, energy, and efficiency to all those who will take part in this project. And we pray that we will have a better transition to this area. We pray that as we are about to leave, take us to our homes in safety in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.